we go. Just a quick update on the uh, Plains Indians um, commission. Um, Forty-two figures painted now. Um, I'm starting to get a bit more of a feel for the um, for the Braves, for the Indians, for the horses. Um, Sent some really nice links on horse, uh, Native American horse uh, breeds and colours. They seem to use a lot of light horses. Um, which I'm gradually trying to work in. Um, you can't really see it under these lights. I will get some nice stills though as uh, as things progress. But yeah, I'm gonna, I'm enjoying myself. Um, adding a bit of wall paint. Trying to keep the shades as earthy as I can, which was part of the brief. Um, at the same time, trying to capture... Um, I know the light's not great there. The... The, the colours of the horses. Um, Mark has decided that he wants satin varnish, which I'm really pleased about because I use a lot of satin varnish and I, I really think the finish works so well on, on, on things like this. So you see the horses and everything is looking very flat there at the moment, but that the, the satin will just bring them out, bring the colours and, and, and the muscle tones and everything out. Um, yeah, one thing it has been, um, I'm trying to find a typical, the, the, the skin tone. Um, i just bring that up there. Um, yeah, obviously not going, not wanting to go too light with the flesh. Um, so that's the kind of skin tone. I think that's Vallejo, orange brown and mahogany brown. Um, seems to work quite well. I'm just spinning around there again. You see a bit of wall paint on the front of both the horse's nose and the rider. I'm not happy with some of the shield designs yet, I will say that. So I could well come back before I add that varnish. I'm just trying to find something that just looks a little bit better. But on the whole, it's coming along nicely. Um, as I say, 42 figures down now. Um, and there's a few of the sort of the chiefs. Uh, you can see the all individually based and at the back you can see some dice trays on the chieftain figures um, an actual fact every one is is individually named um, individually named warriors on the bottom of the bases you can't see that yet obviously but um, yeah um, one thing I, that came up was the fact that the courses were cast with just the one rain down one side um, on some of the figures, quite a lot of the figures actually. Um, I raised that with Mark. I couldn't understand it because the castings are so good. And uh, it's actually c totally correct that the uh, Plains Indians rode with a single rein, no bit in the in the horse's mouth, just a single, uh, often braided rein up to twelve feet long, um, hooked under under the horse's jaw. And as I say, braided up to 12 foot long, um, just along the one side. So if a rider was unhorsed, he could cling to it and uh, use it as a means of remounting. So they <laughs> are totally correct in that. Um, obviously, I'm used to painting the podionic horses, so I'm not uh, used to painting so many different coloured horses. And, and, and um, So it's a learning curve, but I, say, I think I've got about 400 mounted Warriors, individual mountain warriors, and there's about another hundred foot Indians on foot, and then we've got um, um, uh, the, the seventh cavalry, <laughs> they're coming as a separate box in September, but um, it's uh, you know, it's going to be great fun, and it's going to be particularly nice to be able to deliver all these figures back. Um, you know, hundreds of them like this, and uh, I know Mark's going to be pleased, and I'm pleased with them, which, as I say, is always the benchmark. And uh, right, so we're nearly four minutes, uh, well, we're over four minutes, so I better stop there. But uh, yeah, it's coming along. A bit more work to do on some of the shield designs, um, but overall, I'm pleased with that. Thanks for watching. Bye.